Ibram X. Kendi is uh, in some trouble here. Um, his own student body really started this investigation. They wrote a very long and thorough report on this. Uh, but this is from WBUR in Boston. Boston University launches inquiry into management culture at the Center for Anti-Racist Research. Following sudden layoffs last week at Boston University's Center for Anti-Racist Research, the school said it is conducting an inquiry into the center's management culture and grant management practices under its leader and founder, the scholar and activist Ibram X. Kendi. In a written statement provided to WBUR Wednesday, a BU spokeswoman said the university had initially launched an examination into the center's grant management practices after receiving complaints in the wake of the layoffs, which was first reported by the Boston Globe. That inquiry has now expanded to include the management culture at the center after additional information came to light, according to BU's statement. Quote, we are in the process of convening an internal group that will examine grants management and productivity, and we will be asking an external consultant to review the organizational climate and respond to concerns that have been raised with management and culture, BU's interim president, Kenneth Freeman, said Thursday in a statement. News of the sudden layoff sent a ripple of shock around the BU community, given the stature and prominence of Kendi, a nationally renowned scholar on race and best-selling author of the 2019 <laughs> nonfiction book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. Kendi, 41, originally founded what used to be known as the Anti-Racist Research and Policy Center in 2017 at American University in Washington. BU recruited him to move the program to Boston University in June of 2020. At the time, BU leadership told WBUR the new Center for Anti-Racist Research would, quote, bring together researchers and practitioners from across the university to engage around issues of racism and racial justice. Staff at the center was tasked with pursuing multiple projects, including the creation of a racial disparities database, an anti-racist graduate degree program, and a media publication. That multimedia platform, The Emancipator, will continue and is not impacted by the recent layoffs, BU spokesman Colin Riley told WBR last week. Uh, Kendi was a guest on WBUR's Radio Boston as recently as June 2023 to discuss a new graphic novel adaptation of his 2016 book, Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America, which earned the National Book Award for nonfiction. He also appeared on the show in May, during which Kendi said the center was in the process of building and really even launching very soon a racial data tracker, which has yet to lift up uh, off the ground. That's like the Vanguard's van is the racial data tracker. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's coming. I'll just say very, very briefly is a very brief point that I've made a million times on this show. This is why, you know, you want to get semantical about critical race theory and what it really means versus what it means now. And OK, I mean, that's a hill some people can choose to die on if they like. Broadly speaking, um, don't think anything you learn in college is a revolutionary idea. They will not teach you revolutionary ideas at university. The whole point of the university system is that you buy in to the system it gains you access to for tens of thousands of dollars, and then you spend decades of your life, if not your entire life, paying back that debt. So the idea that anything they would teach you, no matter how radical it sounds on its face, the idea that anything they teach you at any of these places is in service of overthrowing the system is just nonsense on its face. These are gateways into success within the system. They are not uh, right. institutions intent on subverting it. Right. Uh, they were given 43 million fucking dollars. <laughs> okay. 43 million dollars. From corporations um, like Stop and Shop, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. $5 million. All right. So you got a, a few things going on here. One. Once you've dealt with the low-hanging fruit, right, um, unequal accommodations, uh, right, voting rights, you know, one, once you've attacked that, once you've attacked, you know, basic legal frameworks of discrimination, it, now it gets much more difficult when you still have racial disparities after that. 
um, you can address the failings of capitalism to deal with a problem like this, where you have an entire group of people that, because they were brutally enslaved, have been held back economically and try to address it from that end. Or if you don't want to address the underlying economics that continue to keep that population in a, in a deprived position relative to the white population, um, then you address it more as a religious matter, right? It's, it's the racism in people's hearts, the racism in people's minds. That's, that's a very vague, unaddressable, really impossible to deal with thing, which is great if you're a grifter, right? It's like the war on terror. How do you win it, right? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go on the on this crusade against racism in the human heart. I mean, that's uh, again in keeping with the theme of the show. It, that's a religious crusade. That's not that's not addressable. And even if it were, it still wouldn't actually solve the problem because in a capitalist system, if you don't have any capital, you're unlikely to get any. That's how it works, right? The more you have, the more you get. That's why Donnie Douche is on that fucking channel, even though he never accomplished anything or worked a hard day in his fucking life, okay? So you have an entire population that, because of historic discrimination, doesn't have capital. You have to address it from that angle, but they don't want to. They don't want to, because that is a lot more difficult than letting fucking hustlers like this guy and D'Angelo at all run around, charge crazy amounts of money for speeches to present crackpot theories that incidentally, much to the benefit of the capitalists, keep everybody fighting, suspicious of each other, keep people from being able to get together because you're presenting the idea that everybody has this original sin of racism in their heart you're not allowing any possibility that people can just be one human race all getting along. Not only that, I mean, a lot of these ideas and certainly the ones Kendi and Angelo expound um, have taken the basic idea of universal uh, humanism, the idea that we can, uh, that our fundamental humanity is core and basically called that a racist idea, right? The, one, one, of the, one of the best ideas to come out of the civil rights movement, um, the idea that our common humanity is more important than any particular identity characteristic, I would argue that underlies what's best in the liberal worldview, you know, using the term liberal in its older sense. Well, um, sure. In, in in Robin D'Angelo's case, it's even more insidious than that. I mean, she directly, by the way, she's a white woman, for those of you who don't know. Um, she gets paid to go and address racial tensions in the workplace, i.e. go to workers who are making $12 an hour at a grocery store and explain to them why they need 2, to be nicer to yeah. each other. Well, yeah, she charges thousands of dollars per hour to to do that obviously but she goes to literally divide the workforce right literally tell right. workers what's right. wrong with them for not getting along better right um you talk about an anti-class solidarity activity there there's really nothing more you could say about that go ahead yeah i mean the this you know but it, it it raises a lot of interesting questions that i think we on the left really need to contend with and a lot of people on the left are afraid of these questions because you have so many people who don't understand that this is a grift that don't understand that the how destructive uh these ideas are and don't understand that a lot of these ideas are make work projects for the pmcs because once you yep. present this uh, you know it's exactly it's the war on terror if if it's exactly if yes. the human heart is incurably racist right. you have jobs di dei departments forever right, right? because it's never going to be solved that is a very hopeless depressing vision of humanity um and it is certainly not a solution 
that is soluble. Let me ask you something, even, even if you believe that this is true. On what planet do you think that telling people that our differences are much more important than our similarities, which is what they very pointedly point out, that your identity is paramount. And it's it's racist, actually, not to see it that way. Okay, so you are a minority of the population. Why on earth do you think it's a good idea to convince people when we've spent a couple of generations convincing them that their common humanity is the most important thing, and we've tried to dismantle racism that way. Why on earth do you think it's a good idea to reconvince the majority that our racial differences are paramount? Do you really think that ends in a good place? Combining it with a message of antagonism? and arguing for racism. These people are crazy, stupid, grifting maniacs that are leading the whole fucking society off a cliff. And it is it is good to see somebody like Kindy actually facing uh, this kind of scrutiny. And, and one would hope that it helps undermine the basic philosophy and, and uh, approach to these questions that he represents uh, look you know you'll if these people represented a threat to the system they wouldn't be on tv they wouldn't be lauded in the new york times they wouldn't <laughs> they go would from not university to celebrated. university getting gig after gig they'd be thrown out of the way norm finkelstein was thrown out the way cornell west was thrown out you know, of course, of course, I, it, it, you know, you look at um, D'Angelo, I mean, you want to see the vacuousness of this entire fucking movement, this entire philosophy. OK, so white people are all racist. There, there's racism and everybody's sort OK, why the fuck would you let a white woman redefine Martin Luther King's I have a dream speech for you? Why on earth would you allow, why doesn't she get canceled? A white woman presumes to explain to you that Martin Luther King didn't really mean what people thought he meant for the last 50 some <laughs> years. She's going to explain to you what he really meant by content of her character. And it didn't mean what people thought he meant. This, this, this fucking crazy ass frizzy haired white woman is going to tell you what Martin Luther King really meant. Any 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 anti-racist movement in which that's tolerable is not worthy of that name. And that it, it, you're going to let Robin D'Angelo explain to you the meaning of Jackie Robinson's career, really? And, and we're supposed to take this seriously? That you're you're going to admit this fucking crackpot to start expounding on questions like that and and coming up with the most asinine explanations imaginable? And this is supposed to be a cure to our racial ills. Does, does it look to you like these ideas are curing anything or helping anything or making anything better? The, these, these people are enriching themselves at the expense of society. And uh, the sooner they get pushed off the stage, the better. Please clap.